Mark Rogers TV back with you to compare the conferences. This is our yearly off-season exercise that we undertake to try to give context to the performance of the Power Five leagues against one another. So once the conferences start to play within conference play, how can we possibly compare them? And when they're playing different FCS teams and group of five teams, we can't compare them. But we can give context to the games that they play against each other. This is how we do it. Okay. We're next up the SEC. We've already looked at the ACC, the Pac-12, and the Big 12. Check out those videos. We've got the Big 10 left to do. So on the surface, this looks good for the SEC. They won 15, lost just 7 against the other four leagues. But let's give it some context. All right. In those wins, the SEC went 139 and 58. The 15 teams that won those games went 139 and 58. Not concerned about that. That record could be boosted by uh, weak FCS schedules, group of five teams. Okay, 72 and 51. That was the record of those 15 SEC teams within the SEC. So they won 58.5% of its games in conference. And they defeated 15 consecutive games other power leagues that went 70 and 49. So those are very like seeded and um, evenly matched teams that the SEC won 15 out of 15 against. 58% wins for the other conferences against each other and 58% for the SEC within its conference. So like seeded teams beat like seeded teams and that bears out and that proves our, our uh, formula right there. The average seeded team that won those 15 games in the SEC was a 6.3 seed in the SEC. So we seed all the teams in each conference, 1 through 14 in the ACC, the Big Ten, and the SEC, 1 through 10 in the Big 12, 1 through 12 in the Pac-12. Then we have to adjust the seeds so that they're fair and even and comparable. Uh, we have to make that slight seeding adjustment, and we do. So the average win for the SEC had a 6.3 seed defeating a 6.4 seed in the other conference, which if that's one game, it doesn't mean a whole lot. Of course, a six seed could beat another six seed in another league, but they did it 15 consecutive times. Okay, the losses for the SEC, there's seven of them. Those SEC teams that lost seven consecutive games went 31 and 27 in the SEC. They won 53% in conference. They lost to pretty good teams, though. They lost to seven teams that went 43-16 and 16 within their conference. That's a 73 winning percentage. So that's to be expected. So what games are we talking about? So for the SEC and the wins, Bama won three of those out-of-conference games. They defeated a one seed in Clemson, a one seed in Michigan State, and a six seed in the Big Ten in Wisconsin. All right, Ole Miss defeated Oklahoma State, throttled them in the Sugar Bowl, right? Ole Miss is a three seed, Oklahoma State's a two seed. The other wins for the SEC, Arkansas over Kansas State, LSU over Texas Tech, Texas A&M over Arizona State, Mississippi State defeated North Carolina State, Auburn over Louisville in the opener. That's a good win for the SEC right there. Auburn, a 10 seed, defeated Louisville, a five seed in the ACC. LSU over Syracuse, Georgia over Georgia Tech, those are to be expected. 11 seed Syracuse, 12 seed Georgia Tech. Good win for the, the uh, SEC right here. Mizzou, a 13 seed in the SEC over BYU, an adjusted 6 seed elsewhere. And then this is the best game and boosted the point total for the SEC right here. South Carolina, the very worst team in the SEC in terms of seeding. The 14 seed in the SEC, three and nine in the conference, one and seven in the conference as well. 14 seed in the SEC defeated North Carolina, the two seed, an eight and zero ACC team. Georgia over Penn State, Tennessee over Northwestern, those uh, comparable seeded games. Georgia the seven, Penn State the seven, Tennessee defeated Northwestern, the Wildcats a five, Tennessee the six. All right, the losses. The worst loss for the SEC at a conference was the Arkansas game. Arkansas finished off as a four seed in the SEC. They lost to Texas Tech in out-of-conference play. Texas Tech a six seed out of ten teams, so an adjusted eight-plus seed uh, out of 14 teams in the Big 12. 
Texas A&M lost to Louisville. Not a bad loss. South Carolina lost to Clemson. Obviously, that's to be expected. Clemson, the one seed, national runner-up, defeated South Carolina, the 14 seed in the SEC. Kentucky lost to Louisville. Again, not a bad loss for the SEC because Kentucky's the 12, Louisville's the 5. Florida lost some big out-of-conference games to Michigan, a 2-4 game and a 2-3 game against Florida State, and Tennessee lost to Oklahoma, a one seed out of the Big 12. So that's reflected here. Not bad losses for the most part for the SEC. 6.8 is the average seed of the SEC team that lost those seven games against a 3.8 from the other conferences. So what we did is we had to adjust the wins and losses. So we gave 20 points off the top for all the wins and deducted 20 points for losses for each conference, and in this case, the SEC. So we started there. So Bama's win against Clemson in the national championship game starts out at 20 points. Well, Bama's a one seed, Clemson a one seed, so it stayed at 20 points. Different situation here. Alabama defeats Wisconsin. Bama the one seed in the SEC, Wisconsin a six seed in the Big Ten, so that has to be adjusted. That's not the same type win as defeating Clemson. You defeated a six seed in the Big Ten, so that has to be adjusted. It's not 20 points for the SEC in that case. It's adjusted for the seeding. The difference, one in a six, that's five points. That's a 15-point win for the SEC. That's how we did that. Uh, big win here, of course, in South Carolina defeating North Carolina, the 14 over the two, as we described. So South Carolina, a 12-seed difference. Tack on 12 to the 20. That's a 32-point game for the SEC. Worst loss, again, Arkansas, Texas Tech, and we adjusted all the seedings for the wins and losses on down the line. So what we have is the average quality of win for the SEC is 19, average quality of loss 17, and then we'll multiply it by uh, 15 for the wins and 7 for the losses to give you a final point total that we will compare. doesn't mean a whole lot when we don't see what the other conferences did. So we've run through the ACC, the Big 12, and the Pac-12. We've got the Big 10 to go. And we will compare the conferences and give you not necessarily the best conference. We're not going to say this means that this conference is for sure the best conference. But we can say that this conference, whoever that is, and right now it looks like it might be the SEC. Last year was the Pac-12 at 13-6 and six against the other conferences and with quality wins measured out by the formula. This year, again, it looks like it's going to be the SEC. We will soon see. But we can at least say that that conference played the best in those number of games against the other Power 5 leagues. Uh, check us out, uh, the other videos and so forth, and of course our final rating right here on Mark Rogers TV.